Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So recently I announced my upcoming Steam game called Dinky Guardians. Go ahead and add it to your wishlist. In order to announce the game, I need to make a trailer. And the game is meant to be multiplayer, so it needed to show multiple players running around. However, the game is still very much in early development. Right now there's no multiplayer connection at all. So that was the problem that I needed to solve. How do I simulate multiplayer to show the vision of the final game in the trailer? The straightforward answer is to just make some simple AI, just like you would for making enemies or something like that. However, in order to simulate multiplayer, that means I want the AI to control player objects. Now technically, I could make an AI script just for the AI players, make it specifically based to be AI controlled. I could define some waypoints and make the AI directly move towards it, then play some kind of pickup animation or something like that. It would require a bunch of specific code just to make that, but it would work. I've done that several times in the past. However, then I would have a bunch of duplicated code and tons of work that would only work for the AI. I would basically end up with one player that is meant to be player controlled and a very similar one that is meant to be AI controlled. So what I ended up doing is actually something very simple and it's a nice trick that many of you might not know about so hopefully you find this video useful. Basically what you do is you simply separate the logic from the inputs. Then you have a script that listens to player input and another one that fakes input based on AI. That way the core player script is shared between both the player and the AI thus making the code much much simpler. So here I have my player, it's pretty basic, it's just walking around, so I'm controlling the player myself. And then over here are a whole bunch of AIs just walking around. For example, there's this one over here doing a bunch of predefined tasks. So it goes to that position, grabs some resources, goes there, drops it, then goes to another position, and then back in there, back to grabbing resources and doing a bunch more things. Now with the game pause, if I look at both these characters, here's the one being player controlled, you can see this one has a player component, and then the AI one also has a player component. But then the player has this player input controller script, whereas the AI has this bot controller script. So they both share the same core player component, but then have different components attached to those. So let's see how this really works. Here is the player script, and the important part is over here. Here we have a bunch of delegates. Now if you're not familiar with delegates, I have a whole video on them, so go watch that. They are super useful. And basically the way that this works is the player logic always asks for input directly through these delegates. So for example, down here for handling the movement, it simply gets the input vector and uses that to move the actual object. And then I just have a simple function in order to set all of the input delegates. Then for the other scripts, here is the player input controller, which as you can see, simply has a reference to the player and on start simply calls the set input delegates in order to set the input delegates on that player. Here it really just uses the regular inputs. So it goes into the input manager, it can the move direction, then test for a bunch of key downs, something very basic. By the way, you might be questioning why am I not using the new input system. This is a great example to how I develop my own games. First I get things working with the input manager, and then in the future, then I refactor it to use the much more capable input system. That's exactly what I did in my free course, and it's also what I'm doing here in my Steam game. So this script sets the input delegates using the input manager for the player inputs. And then I have this other script, the bot controller. This one, if we see, it also has a reference to the same core player component. And then down here on start, it also sets the input vectors on the player. However, instead of using input directly from the player, this one actually uses some AI to define what values to return from these delegates. So as you can see, the get input vector just returns a input move there. And this input move there is down here on update, depending on the action, it is calculated based on some basic AI. The AI logic is all really simple. For the trailer, I just needed some super basic actions, pretty much just moving, interacting, and waiting. So all the actions in the trailer are just based on those. The interact action depends on what object is in front of the character. I'm using pretty much the exact same logic that I covered in the how to talk to NPCs video. For defining the actions, I simply made this basic struct. I made it serializable so that it shows up in the editor. Here's an example on the AI bot that we saw. Over here on the bot controller, here is the bot action array. So as you can see, it's going to move to this position, then it's going to trigger an interact action, then wait for three seconds, move to another one, interact and so on. So that is how the bot goes to this position, then goes here, interacts to gather that, then goes there, interacts to drop it, and so on. Here are all of the basic AI actions, and for triggering those actions, the AI is super basic. So for doing a move to action, for that it just calculates the direction towards the target position, and then it stores that direction on the input move there, which again the core player component is going to use this. However, this logic over here, this is not directly moving the player, that is going to happen later on when the core player script requests this input vector. So this doesn't actually move the player directly, but still it's going to run on every update. And then over here, just a basic reach position logic. If it gets close enough to the target position, then simply goes on to the next action. Then the wait action is also super simple. Just count down a simple flow timer. When it's elapsed, goes to the next action. And interact, again, the same thing. It basically fakes pressing the interact button, and then it's done. 
So that's really it, as you can see, it's super basic. Then back here in the core player script, this one does not care where these values come from. So it does not care if it's the player driving these inputs or if it's the AI, it does not matter. It simply goes into these functions in order to test for the input and use that to move the player or use that to test for interaction and so on. This core script does not care where those inputs come from. Here's another simple example that is shown in the trailer. So this character right here is meant to go there in order to gather some food. Then it's meant to go here in order to feed this stinky and simply repeat. If I look on the bot controller, yep, it has exactly those two actions. So it has move to and interact, meaning it's going to move there, interact and wait a bit. Then it's going to move here, interact and wait a bit. So let's hit an action. Yep, there's a character, it goes there, triggers an interact action, then waits a bit. Then when it's done, goes on there, interacts, feeds the dinky, and goes there and does the same thing. All right, awesome. And again, I can still move my regular player perfectly normally. So both these are sharing the same core components. That's the main benefit of this approach. The player class is entirely shared between both the player and the AI. That way, if I want to add more mechanics, like for example, enabling the player to build something, in order to do that, I just need to add that logic over here on the interaction script. And if the core player can do one action, then the AI and the actual player can both do that action. Also, because the code is very clean with clearly the couple interactions, it means I don't really have to change much. Here's the scene showcasing the building construction. And as you can see, the bots walk around and they do some regular construction. Now, as far as the bots are concerned, they are really just moving around doing an interact action. So it's all super basic. So with this simple AI script, all I had to do was really just define all the positions for all the interactions that I wanted to showcase in the trailer. So there's this area right here for showing the player feeding the dinkies. Then over here, there's an area showcasing all the building mechanics. And then finally, at the end, there's an area showcasing the defense mechanics. Now for this one, these two towers, they are driven by just regular AI. So this does not require any delegates or anything. It's just normal AI. But also to make that defense shot look a bit more interesting, also added a bunch of players just randomly walking around. And finally over here for the resource gathering automation. For this part, this is all handled through some regular AI. So this tower here, this is looking for resources within a certain radius. It looks for them, it finds one, picks it up and puts it over here in storage. Then the vehicle is also some basic AI. So the vehicle simply goes to storage. If there's something in there, picks it up and drops it somewhere else. So the tricky part was really just handling the player AI to simulate multiplier. And as you can see, thanks to using this pattern for using delegates for inputs, and also because of using clean code for the interactions, because of that, this was all pretty easy to do. Also, here's an extra quick tip related to the trailer. If you notice, the trailer has some nice moving shots. Now for that, the straightforward approach is to make some animations moving the camera. So grab this virtual camera, make an animation and move it somewhere. That would be the manual approach. However, that is really pretty time consuming. So a much simpler trick is just using the built-in CineMachine blending. If you look inside the CineMachine brain, so here it is, the main camera and inspector. Yep, it does have a CineMachine brain component. And over here, you can see some settings based on how it blends between the various virtual cameras. The important one is over here, the blend. So you've got ease in, ease out, custom and so on. And importantly, over here is the time. So this is going to take 10 seconds to smoothly interpolate between one virtual camera and the other one. So if you set it to a huge amount like this, like 10 seconds, then you take one of these virtual cameras, you make the start virtual camera with a certain priority, and then you make another virtual camera on a different position with a higher priority. However, just like this, then it's simply going to start with this one enabled. So to make a nice animation during runtime, simply set this one as higher priority and then disable this game object, then start playing the game. Now start recording and it's currently only showing the first camera and now simply enable this one. And there you go, it now nicely smoothly interpolates between the first camera and the second camera for a really nice slow moving shot. So that's another quick tip which is quite useful when making trailers for your games. Alright, I hope you found these tips useful and I hope they help you in making your own games. Go ahead and add Dinky Gardens to your wishlist. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.